Anyways, let's see if we find anything else interesting in this tower. Something interesting about Gothic 2 is that you can uh, interact with many things in this game, like sitting on this chair. And you might notice that button there, which is really hard to spot the first time you play through this game. Well, let's see what it does. Pressing button always does something interesting. And it opens that gate over there. Which has a mana potion as well as a chest with this. Let's see. Some gold. And magic spells. These will be coming handy. We also have book stands in this game, which contains information about alchemy and other stuff about the game, and also gives us a little bit of experience. This menacing looking thing is a Shrine of Beliar, in other words the Dark God of this game. We can pray and even offer life energy to Beliar if we want to, but we can see that Beliar is a giving god, but more someone who gives pain and nothing really nice. And here we have a little puzzle here with a key. And a chest with a keyhole, so we just logically pick up the key and use it on the chest. As soon as you got it in your inventory, the hero uses it automatically, so you don't need to, like, apply the key or something. And you just open the key with the use key, which is mouse 1 on default. We also got some more book stands, which provide uh, a bit a bit uh, input about the combat, about the island, and a little bit more alchemy and the different monsters of this island. Again, if you want to read, please pause the video. In order to reach some well hidden items in this game, we need to drop down here, which can be a little bit tricky if you don't pay attention. It is pretty easy to die. And to die. And die. If you play it smart, though, you can easily jump down here. And still cock it up if you just drop down here. Anyways, to do is the right way, or how I did it is actually a completely wrong way, but it somehow worked. Is a certain rule of thumb in this game is that you always have to jump down. Walking off a ledge is most mostly way more painful than jumping down. And our reward are two simple spell scrolls and a potion. But since we're not done yet, let's go back into the tower, shall we? Oh hey there, skeleton. 
It's nice to see that Sardos already had the time for some interior decoration, even though he just built the tower a couple of days ago. Here we have some uh, different pl alchemy plants in the game, which uh, mo mostly have a regular healing effect like restore mana or health. Some of them have also permanent effect like increasing strength or dexterity, but those should be saved for when you learn alchemy because making potions out of them is way more effective than just eating the raw plant. Well, that's everything we can get from Zara's Tower, but it should be enough to get by. But before we go on, we should actually take a look at our equipment quickly, since we picked up a couple of weapons, like this heavy branch and this dagger. And we also picked up uh, a belt of force, which we might as well equip. In front of us lies the first quote-unquote enemy, which is a harmless sheep, but it serves as a very well punching bag for our first combat experience. We have a couple of moves with the directional buttons. With mouse 1 you target your victim, and with left and right and forward you can do moves, and with backwards you can block enemy attacks. But as you might have read in one of the books in Sardis Tower, you cannot block uh, attacks from monsters like like this little goblin here, who is our first actual threat of this game. They're not very tough, they are usually in groups, which can be a little bit more annoying since you can see that he sometimes tries to circumstrap you, but overall they're not a big threat. Over here underneath those trees we find our first ranged weapon in this game together with a couple of scrolls and a potion. It is a beautiful short bow, sadly there are only uh, around 9 arrows or so, so we better conserve ammo. We will use it later on to test it. Now look at that, if that isn't a cave entrance, I guess we got enough time to quickly take a look in here, see what we can get. During my playthrough I won't be bothering to pick up every single plant in the game, only a couple of ones like the dart mushroom since he has a special effect which will be revealed later in the game. Okay, time to test our bow. Important in this game is that you don't aim manually, instead it auto targets your enemy. So where's the rub? Well, whether you hit or not is determined by your skill with the bow, and since we completely unlearned everything, we won't hit shit unless we're standing almost on the toes of our target. And even then we can still miss due to the evil number generator pulling the strings in the background. Also, I got no clue why the character animation starts uh, stuttering here. Maybe it's not even recognizable in the actual video, but it doesn't matter anyways. 